Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with my August wrap-up. I have a lot of books to talk about, so grab a snack, you guys. I will link my TBR for all of the readathons I was participating in, so you can get more info on the challenges and the hosts and all of that. So going in the order of the Newt's readathon challenges, an A in arithmancy was to read a book of at least 300 pages, and I read The Truth Commission by Susan Juby. This is actually a recommendation from Kathleen and worth a thousand words, and I loved this book so much. Our main character has an older sister who does this kind of series of graphic novels that are based around her family. And they're incredibly unflattering, even cruel, but she's made a lot of money, she's become famous, and the plot of the book starts when Normandy, our main character, so not the sister who does the graphic novels, decides with her friends to kind of take on this truth-telling project, and that leads to a lot of secrets they don't know what to do with, and then her sister's graphic novel kind of uh, business or inspiration gets tangled up in that. And it, again, it is so hard to describe this plot, but there's a lot of discussion of truth and how that informs art and how the two overlap and this was just such a brilliant book. I absolutely loved Normandy's voice. Like it was just so much fun being in her head because she was so clever and funny and I loved the setting of this weird arts focused high school in Canada. But I actually feel like the author did an amazing job of like balancing the believability with the cleverness of it. So many great things about friendship and family and art again and just I hate, please go and read this book, it was so good, and it kind of blew my mind a little bit, and I gave it five stars. For an A in astronomy, you were supposed to read a book with stars on the cover, and I actually did a reread of A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. This is the first book in the Wrinkle in Time quartet, or quintet, depending on how you count it, and I think a lot of people know the story for this one, but it's about Meg Murray, and she goes on a journey with her brother Charles Wallace and sort of a friend of theirs named Calvin to try and get her father back, and they kind of end up on this big adventure along the way to kind of fight the forces of darkness in the universe. I really like this book. I liked it when I was younger and I like it a lot and I still like it now. I feel like there are certain aspects of it I can actually appreciate even better now. I know some people feel like the themes of this book are too obvious, but personally I don't mind that. I don't mind in books if there is a very clear theme or like through line or message as long as you actually show it to me in the plot and in the characters rather than just telling it to me in the narration over and over. This book is definitely not perfect. You can tell that it was written many years ago because some of the language used is definitely not something we would use today. Like I believe there are some derogatory words about mentally challenged people if I'm correct but in, I, in almost all cases I think those were challenged or it was clear that we were not supposed to go along with that description, but that's just something to keep in mind. And finally, I would have liked for Meg to be a little more active for more of the story. Like, she definitely was active at the end, and I really like that, but I just wish that she had done a little bit more earlier on, I think. But other than that, I really enjoyed this one, and I give it four stars. For an acceptable and care of magical creatures, you had to read a book with an animal on the cover, and I read The Stone Girl Story by Sarah Beth Durst. This book is about a girl who's, who's carved out of stone, she was created by a human man as kind of like his child, and he has created a bunch of other animals made out of stone as well. But at this point, this human man has died many years ago, and she and these animals just kind of live in harmony by themselves. But now there are markings that kind of keep them alive and that have enchanted them in order to walk around and talk and do all these other things are starting to fade. And the, some of the animals are starting to basically die and she decides that she has to go to a city and find a magical stone carver in order to rescue her family and to save everyone she cares about. This was a really lovely story. I really liked the world. I really liked the way that storytelling and the power of stories and of how we can make them our own. I really like how that was a part of the plot and the magic but also kind of the bigger message. This is definitely not a book for you if you don't like um, strong messages in your books, kind of like I was saying for the uh, A Wrinkle in Time, because this one is definitely, like, it's very clear that it's saying things about art and storytelling, but I actually enjoyed that. I really liked Meika, our main character. I really loved some of the side characters. One of my only critiques is, and I don't know exactly how to say this, but there were some places in the book where I felt like we were just kind of marking time, almost. Like, it felt like something should have already happened and it hadn't yet. Like, it, it wasn't boring exactly and it wasn't like the pacing was off, but there were just some gaps, I think, where I felt like we should have been doing something, if that makes any sense. But I did really enjoy it and the ending of this book got really emotional for me in a way that I was not expecting, so I definitely highly recommend this one. For an E, you were supposed to read a book under 160 pages, and I read the play Red by John Logan. This is about the life of the artist Rothko and he gets this assistant and it's kind of about their two lives, sort of, and how they, I don't know, how they interconnect, and of course along the way there is a lot of discussion about the importance of art and about what kinds of art are worthwhile and which kinds aren't, and things like that. Um, 
This was an okay play. I felt like a big chunk of it was extremely pretentious and to an extent I think it was supposed to be and that did get better near the end of the play because the characters themselves started to recognize how pretentious they were being. I don't know, I didn't love it. There were some great passages. This one felt like a like talk piece on art itself with some like character stuff thrown in and there was also some things about the um the assistant character i can't even remember his name now uh there were some things about his life that i thought were kind of weird some of the symbolism i thought was done really well some of it just got over the top it was fine i gave it three stars for an a in charms you had to read a book with magic in it and for that one i reread a short story collection that i haven't read in many years and that was book of enchantments 10 tales of wonder by patricia c reed i have a full non-spoiler review where i kind of go in depth on these stories so i will link that down below and i just really loved this i loved it so much more than i thought and this is coming from someone who's not a fan of short story collections in general for an e you were supposed to read a book with a cover that charmed you in other words you would read but without knowing more about it so kind of a cover by i don't do this very often but one of the only ones that applied was A Nearer Moon by Melanie Crowder. This was really disappointing for me. It's about a young girl whose sister gets very sick from this infected uh, kind of magical swamp that her and her village live on and this the sickness is always fatal so she decides to try and do everything she can to find some way to save her sister's life. And we kind of get like dual stories because there's also this story of a fairy character and kind of what happens with her and her sister and I just like this book just didn't work for me. The writing style I found really just kind of annoying. I think it was trying to be very lyrical and beautiful, but it just got, everything just got bogged down in so much detail. I found the characters just hard to connect with. I didn't really like the plot of the story, and I found some of the character motivations really frustrating and unbelievable. I did end up giving it a three stars. It was going to be a 2.5, but, but there were some things about the ending that I did like and that I think helped make the story a little better, but honestly it probably is more of a 2.5. I haven't decided. For O, you had to read a book that you think will leave a mark. And I read The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis. We actually read an excerpt from this in one of my high school classes and I was really, really interested and impressed by it. So this is kind of nonfiction or essays. Basically, I feel like this is arguing against moral relativism. Like, oh, we can never judge that something is wrong because what's right for one group of people may be wrong for another and vice versa. Like, we shouldn't judge. I feel like this um, collection, among a lot of other things, it really refutes that in, I think, a very convincing way. I think C.S. Lewis writes brilliantly. Actually, my favorite part of this, because it's sort of like three mini essays that are definitely co uh, connected, my favorite was the first kind of section that was called Men Without Chests. And it's, it's so powerful and interesting because it talks about things having intrinsic value outside of just how people view them. I'm not sure I'm describing this well at all. I will link a review from Goodreads down below that I think did such an amazing job of describing this collection and was really what made me want to pick up this very short, very um, important book. So please check that out. I will say he does talk about a dissection in that review, so be aware of that, but I just felt like this was brilliant. I think he did so much in such a short amount of pages. He talks about how despicable eugenics is and he talks about some really just important things about the way that we live in the world and what what good means. Anyway, as you can see, I think it definitely is going to leave a mark. And I gave The Abolition of Man five stars. For A and Divination, you were supposed to read a book set in the future, and this was for the Booktube Readathon project, and I reread Fairest by Marissa Meyer. This is a novella between the third and fourth Lunar Chronicles books that is a prequel, and it talks about the backstory and the life of Lavana before she became the villain that we know her as in the Lunar Chronicles series. And this was okay. I appreciate what it was doing, but I just don't enjoy it very much. I really like Marissa Meyer's writing style. I really like the setting of Luna and getting to see more of Artemisia, the capital city, but I just don't... I just don't enjoy this as much as the Lunar Chronicles books. I do think that it's worth reading because it really does help you understand some things about Lavana, and I actually think that's very impressive when a villain origin story doesn't, like, sway you to one side or the other, you're kind of in the middle. Like, yeah, I get you, Lavana, but you're still crazy. Also, there is a trigger warning for rape in this book. And I ended up giving Fairest three stars. For an E, you had to read a book under 200 pages, and I read The Legend of the Poinsettia, or Poinsettia, retold and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. In a recent tag video, which I will link down below, I got super emotional about Tommy DePaula's books and about how much they influenced me growing up and how much I loved them. And I had never read this one, and I really enjoyed it. It's kind of a a Christmas legend about the poinsettia in Mexico and kind of how that came to be associated with a Christmas flower and I really liked this. Of course the illustrations are always beautiful and colorful and just 
just so lovely. Um, I ended up giving this four stars just because I think in comparison to some of his other books, I think there wasn't quite as much actual text or like story. I would have liked that to be a little more fleshed out, but I don't know what original sources he was working with, so maybe there wasn't a lot of room to do that. But I gave The Legend of the Poinsettia four out of five stars. For an O, you had to read a mythology book, and for that one I read Legendary Ladies, 50 Goddesses to Empower and Inspire You by Anne Shen, and she is the author and the illustrator of this book. And I really, really enjoyed this. First off, the illustrations are just gorgeous, and I really like um, I really like the variety of goddesses and countries this covers. Like, they're not all, you know, classical mythology that we're all very familiar with. I think there were a lot of popular uh, goddesses, but there were also a lot of ones that you are not as well known. A few that I had never even heard of, and I'm a big fan of books like this, so that was really exciting. Another thing I liked about it was that it actually includes at the end of each entry, um, like suggestions or recommendations for if you want to call on a particular goddess for help with something, which I thought that was a really cool addition because I haven't seen many, um, many books like this that do that. And the only thing that, the only thing I wasn't as pleased with, and the reason I gave it 4.5 stars instead of 5 stars, is that I would have liked there to be more description of the goddesses themselves and like some of their, some of the myths and stories surrounding them because they're pretty short entries, some of them. Like, there's not a lot of information, and like I said, I've read other books like this, and I think that there are some other ones that had a much more um, detailed entry on each goddess where you really felt like you got to know their place in the religion or mythology that they're from. So that was the only thing, but again, gorgeous illustrations, and like I said, I gave Legendary Ladies 4.5 stars. For an A in Herbology, you had to read a book with a green cover, and for that one, I read War Cross by Marie Lu. It does have some green on the cover, and this was actually a buddy read with my lovely friend Olivia from Read by Liv. I will link her channel down below. And this is a sci-fi story set in a world where this kind of virtual reality game has become really popular and everybody's involved with it. And our main character, Emika Chen, is a hacker who kind of accidentally hacks her way into a big um, tournament of this game, of this game called Warcross, and then she kind of gets recruited by the creator of the game to help him figure out something that is going wrong with the game. I enjoyed this book. I thought that the plot was really well done. I really liked the writing style and the world building. I think Marie Lu did a fantastic job of really getting the reader to see clearly these things that we don't have that many comparisons for in our regular lives. I thought that was done so well. I did have a few complaints though. Um, one of them, one of the big ones was the characters. I feel like the relationship between Amika and her love interest, I feel like that went a little too quickly for me. It's like, okay, I understand he's hot, but like, you've got bigger problems? Like, you've got things going on now, like, this is not the time. And I just felt like they didn't know each other that well. That being said, a lot of people have talked about what an amazing bunch of plot twists this book is, and I would have to agree. Even though there was some of this I had figured out, I did not see all of it coming. There were some big things that happened that I was completely blindsided by, which was really actually kind of exciting for me, so I ended up giving Warcross 3.5 stars. For an E, you had to read a book with illustrations, and for that I read Cinnamon, written by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Divya Srinivasan. First off, the illustrations are just breathtaking. Oh, I just, I'd give it five stars for the illustrations alone. Um, the only thing I didn't like quite as much about this book, and I understand it's a picture book, it's an illustrated story, but I still felt like there wasn't quite enough story, or at least I felt like we got to the end of the book and I thought we would have gone on a little further. I felt like there was something missing at the very end of the story, but again, the illustrations are gorgeous, the writing was beautiful as well, and I did really, really like the story and the folklore elements that we got, so I gave Cinnamon four stars. For an A in History of Magic, you had to read a book that you think would fit right in at the Hogwarts Library, and I read The Apprentice Witch by James Nichol. This is a recommendation from Laura at Bookie Laura. So in this book, our main character, Ariane Wen, is in training to become a witch. Unfortunately, she fails her witch test, becomes kind of demoted, to an assistant or apprentice witch and gets sent to this little town, kind of just pushed out of the way, and then she discovers that there are all these strange and creepy things happening in the town and she has to actually use her magic and fight these bad things. I really like some of the side characters and I really like the descriptions of the animals, and I've talked about in a previous video how I'm super bad at picturing animals, like magical animals that are described, but these were done so well that I could picture exactly what all of these creatures were supposed to look like. There's one little creature called a moon hare that I absolutely adored, and I kind of want one. They're, they just sound so cute and wonderful. However, I found Arianne Wynn to be kind of a frustrating character at times. I got really irritated because a huge chunk of the plot 
would have been solved or would not have even happened if she had just told somebody what was going wrong before it blew up in everyone's face. But other than that, I did like this book and I ended up giving The Apprentice Witch 3.5 stars. E was to read a book published at least five years ago and I read Poems from the Book of Hours by Rainer Maria Rilke which was translated from the German by Babette Deutsch, and I'm so sorry, I'm going to look up how to pronounce all of those names. So this is a very short collection of poems, and I'm actually not going to hold off on reviewing this one until I do my whole wrap-up for women in translation, even though this was not written by a woman, it was translated by a woman, so it still counts, kind of. For an O, you had to read a book that was at least 400 pages long, and for that one, I finally read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is a fantasy that is inspired by West African mythology and folklore, and it is set in a world where magic was banished from the land. The evil king of this area actually hunted down and killed all the practitioners of magic, and now our main character Zeli has the opportunity to go on a kind of quest and bring magic back. I really loved the world building and the setting of this book, and I also just loved the descriptions of magic and mag the magic system and everything. There were multiple passages that cover kind of these magical um, events that actually gave me goosebumps because of how beautifully and evocatively they were described. And I really loved the incorporation of the gods and goddesses and how that worked into the world and into the magic system itself. I really liked that aspect and I really liked um, some of these side characters. Like I was surprised at how much I really liked Zeli's brother Tsane. I think that's how you say it. I really enjoyed him and I also ended up really liking Amari who's kind of this spoiled princess character who is also along for the ride. I did actually end up really enjoying her and really enjoying her growth. I do think there was there were some things that got kind of repetitive about her character because she was sort of motivated by this one thing or this one character for like a huge chunk of the book but once she started actually developing and kind of learning more about the world she lives in and how it's not the same as what she was taught growing up. I really, really liked her. I was not a fan of Inan, her brother, as much as I liked Amari. And he's kind of the character everyone says is a lot like Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. And in some ways I can see that, but as the book went on I felt like he got less similar to Zuko. Because Zuko has like such an amazing character arc. No one ever shuts up about it because it's that good. But Inan, it just, he felt so inconsistent sometimes. Like some of his changes of heart just felt incredibly quick and unmotivated or kind of unconvincingly motivated. And another thing is this book is really long. It's like 500, it's more than 500 pages. I don't have a problem with long books but this book felt really long. It's not like there's not a lot happening because there is. There is a lot of plot and a lot of intrigue and adventure and fighting and dying. There's a lot of that happening at any given moment. But so much time was spent on every part of that that it felt slow even when it wasn't. Like, we'd spend so long describing this one battle scene that it felt like this battle had been taking place over like a day and a half and it was really just like 10 minutes. But I did think the social commentary of this book was handled just phenomenally. Like, I think it had such important things to say about oppression and privilege and there was so much interesting discussion about after, like, if they succeeded in bringing magic back like would that fix everything or would it just kind of fuel further violence? Like there are some characters who felt very strongly in opposite directions and so that was really interesting to see and I think that was just really well done as a part of this book. So I ended up giving Children of Blood and Bone 3.75 to 4 stars. Also as you can probably tell by the premise this is an incredibly dark book so definitely go in knowing that there is sexual assault, there are lots and lots of deaths and horrible abuse and torture so there is quite a bit of heavy material in this book. For Muggle Studies to get an A you had to read a book written by one of your favorite authors and for that one I read Spindle by E.K. Johnston. This is a companion sequel to A Thousand Nights which I absolutely adored. This is a retelling or a reimagining of Sleeping Beauty and I really enjoyed this one. I didn't like it quite as much as A Thousand Nights but I still think it was a fantastically creative version of the Sleeping Beauty story which is not one of my favorites to read retellings of. I'm not going to really try to attempt to summarize this one because it sounds more confusing than it is and also I'm not sure how much to give away especially because of how that affects um, what you know about the first book if you haven't read that one yet. There were just so many things I loved about this book. I really really connected to our main character Yasha and that was really interesting because it was first person and I'm not usually a huge fan of first person narration but I thought his voice was done so well like I just really liked him and I liked how complicated he was and how his feelings about his kingdom and like spinning and everything were all just kind of mixed up together and how sometimes it made him angry and sometimes he missed it. There was also more romance in this one than there was in A Thousand Nights and I for the most part I liked it. I think there was a certain part of it that happened 
a little too quickly, but other than that, I actually really liked the development. And one of my absolute favorite things about this book were the friendships and the intense and beautiful bond between Yasha and his three friends, Tariq, Saud, and Arwa. I just loved all of their interactions. I loved how passionately devoted they were to protecting each other and just their deep friendship was just so meaningful and it, it was just so well done. There were some things about the ending that I didn't quite like or I wasn't completely happy with but I understand why they happened the way they did and I do think it was a good ending for the story like it makes sense and I ended up giving Spindle four out of five stars. For an E we had to read a biography and I read kind of a collection of mini bi biographies and that is Bad Girls, Sirens, Jezebels, Murderesses, Thieves, and Other Female Villains which was written by Jane Yolen and Heidi E. Y. Stemple, illustrated by Rebecca Gay. And this was super disappointing for me. I really love uh, other books that are in this vein that kind of tell the stories of a lot of underrepresented or misunderstood women. This one was just not good. Um, the one thing I will say that I consistently loved was the actual illustrations of the women themselves were absolutely beautiful. Um, and I already knew that I liked Rebecca Gay's art, so that was not a surprise, but I did really enjoy that. I didn't like the comic strip style of like the two authors talking to each other about these women. Other reviewers have pointed that out. It was really weird. I feel like they were just incredibly flippant about some of the things they were discussing. Um, and and there, it was really weird because there were some women where they seemed to, I feel like they handled it better and like they weren't I don't know, they didn't make it like such an awkward comedy, but there were some people, there were some of these women where they were talking about them and like they made it sound super like corny and they were making all these stupid jokes and like just, they were trying to be conversational I think in the writing style and it just irritated me. Like it just really rubbed me the wrong way and I don't think it was an effective way to tell the story of these women. I will say there were a few of these that I hadn't heard of or I weren't, I wasn't super familiar with them. But like for example, I had heard Typhoid Mary referred to before, but I didn't know her story and like what the heck, Mary? So I did learn about some women that I didn't know of before, but I just really didn't like this. I think there are similar books that do a much better job. Actually, I have one behind me, and that is Rejected Princesses by Jason Porath. I don't recommend this one. I gave it 2.5 stars. For an A in potions, we had to read a book that had the name of a color in the title, and I read Six Gun Snow White by Catherine M. Valente. This is a Western-inspired retelling of the Snow White story. Our main character is actually biracial. Her father was white, and her mother was one of the Crow Nation, so that is also handled in this book, and I just thought this was such a beautifully written and intense story. It's very strange. Like, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It's incredibly bizarre, and there are some parts of it that just read like a very disjointed kind of classic fairy tale where things don't really make sense all the time but I think that worked and I just loved the mix of Native American kind of folklore style of storytelling with the original fairy tale and with this like western style of speaking and there are also several illustrations by Charlie Bowater at certain um certain chapter breaks like that one they're just incredibly detailed and beautiful and the reason I didn't give this a full five stars is there were some things about the ending that I think went in too strange of a direction. So even though I liked some of some of the way it was done, I just wasn't quite on board for the way it ended or kind of how we got to the ending. So that's why I gave this four out of five stars, but I definitely recommend this one if you like super weird fairy tale retellings and if you like absolutely gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful prose. It's just, oh my gosh, Catherine and Valente is obscenely talented and I love it. Also, there is a trigger warning for abuse and attempted sexual assault in this book. For an E, we had to read a book with a male lead character, and for that one, I read The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan. This was a buddy read with my fabulous friend Amy from London Bookish. Again, I will link the channel down below. This is actually a reread for me. It was eight years. <laughs> eight years since I read this, so it kind of felt like I was reading a book I hadn't read before, and I really liked it. I really liked some of the new characters we got. I especially really loved Jason as a main character. I know a lot of people hate him because he's not like Percy. I personally really enjoyed him, and I actually would have been more irritated if we had gotten just like a carbon copy of Percy. So this book, without giving too much away, it follows a new quest about uh, the, like this dark kind of creature or this dark presence that is rising and is causing all these other monsters to, to form. And the kids in this book have to, of course, get together and save the world. There were a couple of characters who like I didn't connect with quite as much as I wanted to. Like Piper, I always feel like I wanted to like her more than I did, but on this reread I do think I appreciate her more. So much of this book would have been shortened or avoided or just like done in a less frustrating way if a certain character just like told her friends what was going on and like I understand there were some reasons why she didn't that kind of makes sense but it just took too long <laughs> so that was one thing that really frustrated me but I really like that we get more detail on the Olympians in this book like on the gods they feel more like 
fully developed characters. Like, I love the scenes with Aphrodite. There are a couple with her in this book and I just really enjoyed those because it made her seem like a much more complex character than I think some of the Percy Jackson books kind of did. But I ended up really enjoying this. I was kind of thinking like around a 3.5 because of some of the character stuff and like the frustrating a couple of the frustrating aspects with the plot, but I ended up giving it four stars because man can Rick Riordan write an ending. I had forgotten how amazing this ending was, so four stars. For an A in Transfiguration, we had to read a book with a gray cover, and I read The Crying Rocks by Janet Taylor Lysel. So this is about a girl named Noelle, and she has grown up with, um, with her aunt, I believe, and she was adopted. And her parents may have actually been Narragansett Native Americans. So she kind of goes on this quest to learn more about her family and about her past. And this is another one where it's hard to explain. It's a very short book, but there's a lot of kind of interconnecting story threads. There's a lot about like discovery, like finding who you are and like family and found family versus kind of your birth family. And I ended up with really mixed feelings about this book. So for one thing, Noelle is a really, really unlikable character for uh, the majority of the book. And I do understand why, because she has gone through some really awful things, even if she doesn't remember all of it. Like, she, she's had a past that would definitely cause somebody to be kind of abrasive to the outside world and to other people. So I totally understand that. But I feel like we would... I feel like her development was choppy. She would seemed to be heading in a direction of, like, getting to know people better and, like, kind of... I don't know, making friends. And then all of a sudden, for no reason, she would suddenly revert back to how she was at like the very beginning of the book. And I completely understand that when you are recovering from traumatic experiences, it's it's not a smooth like linear progression. But I feel like even taking that into consideration, it just felt like the writer wasn't sure what she wanted to do with Joelle. I really liked Carlos, her best friend, and I really liked some of the settings. And like, I don't want to say this book is magical realism because it's really not. But there are some, there are some things about the world and about certain places they go, like the crying rocks. There are some things about it that you're never quite sure exactly how much is really happening, and I actually felt like that was really well done for the most part. I also want to say that if you are at all sensitive towards children being harmed, this is maybe a book you want to steer clear of. I don't think we ever see it on page, but there's like quite a bit of like children getting hurt or being neglected. There's a death of a child, like there's there's a lot of really intense stuff. There's a lot of issues that are handled in this book, like homelessness and, of course, adoption and mental illness, and there's there's a lot. I think for the most part, those things got the right amount of attention, considering how short of a book it was, but honestly, I don't even remember some of it. Like, this book was just a very strange reading experience, and I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. And finally, for an E, we were supposed to read a book from an author you hadn't read anything from before. And I read Grounded, The Adventures of Rapunzel by Megan Morrison. This was a recommendation from Giselle, from Giselle Bradley. This is, of course, a retelling of Rapunzel, and I love this book. The main character, Rapunzel, has of course never left her tower, so she has to go on this quest to save her, her kind of adoptive mother, who she just calls Witch, because Witch is always taking care of her. And so she goes on an adventure with Jack, because there's also these like Jack the Beanstalk elements kind of mixed in too. So she and Jack kind of go on this quest for a group of fairies. And along the way, Rapunzel starts learning that some things about her, the place where she lives and about Witch and all of this may not be what she thinks they are. At the beginning of this book, you're not really sure what's going on or like what the world is like or how all these pieces kind of interconnect. But I think it never got to the point where I was frustrated. I was always, like, I could always see why the author was doing it because Rapunzel is incredibly sheltered. So it totally makes sense that she wouldn't actually know much about how the world works. So the reader also doesn't get that understanding until a little bit later on. Rapunzel had so much amazing, amazing character growth in this book. Like I saw reviews from people who like quit at the very beginning of this book because she was so like frustrating and sheltered and like just nonsensical seemingly at times. But I, I don't know, it makes me kind of sad because like if you push through, it's so worth it. She becomes like so strong and so brave and I'm just like really proud of her by the end of this book. And I actually really liked the world building. It's so like surprisingly complex, like with the way that the fairies interact with this world and the way that the kingdoms are set up and all of this. And it seems so cheesy because you hear about the kingdoms and they're all named after colors and there's all these things that make it sound like it's going to be this really kind of corny fairy story and it's absolutely not. Like there was so much like darkness or depth to this book that you wouldn't necessarily expect from like again the way some of the world building starts out but I loved it and this is another one where I was like not expecting the end to be such a kick in the gut like I actually cried near the end of this book because something was so like emotional and like it really it really hit me and connected with me in a way that I was not anticipating so I gave this book 4.5 stars but now I can't remember 
like what I docked half a star for. So maybe I'm gonna bump this up to five, but I really enjoyed this. I am so excited to read the sequel, which has a black Cinderella character who I believe uh, takes on unsafe workplace practices, which sounds amazing. Okay, everybody, that is finally all of the books that I read in August. If you stayed to the end of this video, bless your heart. Thank you so much. I will see you guys soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!